All right, here is our last example from this section. f of x is equal to negative 2 divided by the quantity x plus 4 plus 5. All right, so first of all, we recognize that what we have here is a rational function, which means it's going to be either the uh, missed high five or it's going to be the volcano. So we don't see the square, so it's not the volcano. It's going to be the missed high five. So we know right away that this is the basic shape that we have, something that looks like this. Well, let's see what we've done with this. One of the first things we see is that we have a negative. And that negative means that we are going to reflect, reflect across the x-axis. So we're going to be turning that guy upside down. All right. Well, what else are we doing with it? Well, inside, we see this plus four. So that means we're going to go to the oops, going to go to the left four. You got to do the opposite of what you see. And the plus five means I'm going to go up 5. Oh, wait a minute. There's something else here, right? There's this 2. Now, having that 2 in the numerator is like having a value in front of your main function, which is going to cause you either to have a, a compression or a stretch. Well, since 2 is bigger than 1, this means that we're going to have a stretch by a factor of 2. So it's going to take the normal points it would have had and it's just going to double their distance from the uh, horizontal asymptote. So as we've been doing, let's start by plotting the asymptotes because that tells us how we're going to be moving things up, down, left, and right. So we're going up 5 units, so let me go ahead and dash out that new x-axis which is going to match up with our horizontal asymptote. Went to the left 4 so this is going to be our new y-axis, or vertical asymptote. All right, so let's make sure that we get these points down correctly. If I didn't have the negative and I didn't have the 2, the key points tell us that we'd have points right here at 1, 1. 2 gets you 1 half. 1 half would get you 2. That's what the key points would tell you to do. But we've got a negative, so we've got to turn these guys upside down. So they would be here, here, and right there as we turn them upside down. But wait, that's just doing the negative. But you now have to double these values. So at 1 half, I would have been down 2. And so now I'm doubling that. I'm going to be down 4 units. At 1, because of the negative, I'd be down 1. But because of the 2, I'm going to double that distance and be down 2 units. At 2, I would be down 1 half because of the negative. But because of the 2, I'm going to double 1 half and I'm going to get 1. And so these are going to be your, your basic points you're going to be working with. Okay. Now we said that there is this point symmetry for the missed high five guy, right? Which means I did one half, I went down four. Okay, so one half and down four. To do that symmetry about the point, you would go to the left one half and go up one, two, three, four, and get another point. Here I would go one and then and then down two. So let's go to the left one and up two. Here I go to the right two and down one. So point symmetry says instead of going right and down, go left to and up one. So that's how we can get extra points without having to do a whole lot of work. All right. All right. And so now I just have to put that basic shape. We understand that we're supposed to be getting higher and higher and getting closer to this uh, horizontal asymptote, but we don't really expect to cross that. So it should look something like that. And as we go to the left, it's going to get closer and closer to the vertical asymptote. Remember, it's never going to curve back into itself. This guy's never going to curve back down. And then we have a very similar shape over here with these points. And so that's what our graph is going to look like. Okay. So again, we took that missed high five. We went to the left four. 
we went up five, we had to turn it from being, so this is what it would have been before, this guy right here, and then he would have been something kind of like this. So these red dashes right here is what he would have been without the negative and without the two. So the negative takes that and it turns it upside down where we have those red circles. And then the two stretches it, which is why we go from being down two to being down four, just kind of doubling that distance. The same graphing techniques that we've had this whole semester can be applied to these weirder, I shouldn't say weird, uh, these, these different looking functions. There we go. Uh, but let's finish this though. Let's talk about our domain. So my domain is as we go from left to right. The only value that is bad for this denominator is negative 4. So the domain is everything but negative 4. So negative infinity to negative 4. Union. Negative 4 to infinity. My range is bottom to top. The only skip, the only gap that I have in my range is going to be right here when y equals 5 because I shifted that horizontal asymptote up 5. So that's from negative infinity to 5, union, 5 to infinity. All right, the other, the other questions that we can ask about this. What are your asymptotes? So on, on a quiz or a test, I should be able to ask, what are the asymptotes? And you could tell me both of them, right? So start with your horizontal asymptote. Well, the horizontal asymptote was y equals 0, but you shifted that up 5 units. So that's now y equals 5. The vertical asymptote was x equals 0, but we shifted that to the left 4 units. So that now becomes the equation x equals negative 4. And let's talk about where are we increasing and where are we decreasing. Alright, so where are we increasing, if at all? Because in the last example we weren't increasing anywhere. Trace from left to right. From left to right we see that we are going up here, and even here as we go from left to right we're going up. So we're increasing not only on that open interval from negative infinity to this x value here of negative 4, but also from negative 4 to infinity, we're increasing. And then where are we decreasing? Well, you see that all parts of our domain are already spoken for in terms of where we're increasing, so that means that we are decreasing nowhere. Look, you're going up, you're going up, there's never a place where we are decreasing. So there you have it. You got your graph, domain, range, asymptotes, and intervals over which you're increasing or decreasing. You can get all of this information even without going to the graph, just with basic shifting techniques and knowing what your shapes are. Okay, And I expect you to be able to do that, so practice these guys, get into the homework now, and you know, let me know if you have any questions.